7.30 a.m. all across the valley, the men and women of the Phoenix Fire Department are getting ready for their day. Yeah, they'll check the lights, sirens, they'll make sure that on this that the, the, the outriggers come out so they can set the ladder up. We'll start everything up every morning, make sure it runs okay. You got a bunch of good guys and they come in there and they're self-disciplined, self-motivated. They get, they get the station ready for the day and just make sure everybody gets their stuff and prepared to go on that call. So we try to keep it clean. You know, that's why we do our station duties in the morning. We clean the bathrooms, we clean the kitchen, that kind of thing. Same thing with the bay. This is kind of my area out here. I, I mop the floors or whatever. Our electric gurney, it's to help us out. So um, lifting heavier patients and stuff and you know trying to keep us healthy and not a lot of people get injured. Fifteen feet in the air, and over off there in the distance is you guys. Hey kids. Hey. We're gonna make chicken salad sandwiches and um, enchiladas. He's got a knack for the camera. There we go. Get three or four trucks a day. They're wonderful guys and girls. They just they come to the store. We know them. We know them all by name. I've given my daughter stickers. They're always ready to help. Let's say the elderly when they've got their carts full of heavy things, they'll volunteer to help the people. And every once in a while, they gotta drop everything and run for a call. And there's a difference. We like to call it engine cheese. That's ladder cheese. Engine cheese, we like to get it fresh and shred it. Tastes better, milk better. Shred right yourself. Here. Right here. We like to put a little love with our cheese. So it is. simulated fires, simulate search and rescue, simulate fire attack. But we're gonna pull up, we have to secure water supply. This has 500 gallons of water, but that goes pretty quick. The guys entered the building with their hose line charged, okay? Once they come through, they encounter smoke, heat. We have props that are gas fed. We also have risk, this is what we consider a rescue dummy. This represents about 100, 125 pounds seemingly dragging it out as if it were a victim. It's very important when, when our conditions are very limited and our visibility is very poor to search every bit of the building. We're looking for victims. The ladder company, which you saw in the video, was just on the roof cutting a hole. That's above here. And what they can do is they can cut down and then they can actually push out the drywall just like a regular house. So once we open up the roof with vertical ventilation, that allows the heat and the smoke to escape up like a chimney.
what we're doing right now is we're going to set up a, a vehicle scenario of an auto accident. What we're trying to do is cross a uh, vehicle's doors not to open. We want to deform some of the vehicle, make it a little bit tougher for our firefighter to, to open up and, and move uh, patients. All right, kids, you're going to see some real powerful scissors and stuff here, so watch out. I'm Ryan Place. Um, I work for the Phoenix Fire Department. I'm at Station 9 on B-Shift. This is um, a pumper with the Phoenix Fire Department. This is used for, you know, fire attack and EMS calls, car accidents, all the other same stuff. Um, different than a ladder truck, which is more roof ops and that kind of stuff. This is where the engineer sits. He's the driver. And back here, these are where the two firemen sit. The two front-facing seats is usually where they sit. These are our two main fire attack hoses. It's really simple. These, these loops just come out like that, and then uh, you grab the nozzle and you just stick your arms, arms through there like that, and when you have it like that, you just pull it off. The whole bed comes down and you take off running, and each loop will let go, and you just extend the line that way. This is just the engine compartment in here. This compartment here is what they call the engineer's compartment. Um, it's got a lot of miscellaneous stuff. It's got wheel chocks, it's got extra hose, it's got a toolbox, road flares. So these would be all of our tools that we use. We've got sledgehammers, um, pike poles, um, halligans, Boston rakes. And then uh, this would be the SGBA compartment. It's where the rest of my gear is, and then also my bottle, and then the, all, and then the firefighter's bottle. These are our lifeline. This is the, this is the way we breathe in, in burning buildings. So um, you've got you know, 4,500 PSI of air in there, which is roughly about 30 minutes, depending on how fast you're breathing. This is basically what I do right here. So you've got water coming in, you've got water coming out. Um, each one of these is labeled which hose it connects to. Like I said, those two hoses right there are these two right here, and they're labeled so you know which ones they are. And basically the way they work is you just turn this wheel and water leaves the truck. This would be our intake, and so the pressure coming from the hydrant goes into my truck, and that's my water supply. These trucks do have 500 gallons of water already on them. 500 gallons will go fast, if you're, especially if you're doing 150 GPMs. You've got roughly two and a half minutes of, of water before you're out, so that's why you need to get a hydrant. Okay, so the truck protection, um, if you look, there, there's one there, and there's one on the front of the truck, and basically what that is is if if we get to a, a burning building or something like that and we get too close or, or the fire expands too fast and it's gonna burn up the truck, because these trucks will get hot real fast. You just pull this and it's basically, it's basically a nozzle up there that just shoots water everywhere to keep the truck cool and try to keep the fire off of it. That rarely gets pulled, but it does happen. This is another quick attack line. This is what we call horizontal standpipe. This here is where we keep the ladders, different tools. This is a pike pole. Same thing over on the other side just more air packs. This would be the EMS compartment. This is what we take on pretty much all of our medical calls. It's got everything we need to run a medical call. This is all of our extra restock. So um, if we're on scene, we can go available right after the call. This is the captain of the truck. Everything goes through him. Um, he's the boss and he sits here. He's got the computer screen so he can see what call we're going on. You can always tell a captain on the fire department because they have a red helmet. Everybody else has yellow helmets and then battalion chiefs have white helmets. This truck can go pretty much anywhere and do anything that we need to do that our job entails. Hey guys, my name is Sean Dubois. I'm uh, with the Phoenix Fire Department. I've been on the job for five years now. I'm a firefighter paramedic. And uh, they asked me today here to just give you a brief description on uh, what we call PPE. And that stands for Personal Protective Equipment. This is the stuff that we wear that when you think of a firefighter, this is what we wear when we go to a call that may involve fire, smoke, gas, anything that could hurt us. So we have different pieces of equipment that we put on. And uh, so I'll go through those for you. Right here is I got my boots and we call these, we call these turnouts, okay? And th these are big heavy boots. There's actually metal in these toes right here. Because a lot of the equipment that we use is heavy and can really hurt you. And, one of your big things is your toes. But uh, these are our pants. We pull these pants up. We got suspenders. And those help us keep our pants on so our, they don't roll off in the middle of a fire. If we're crawling through an attic, crawling on the ground, 
Right here we have a, what we call a Nomex hood. And this is what I put on my head. You saw us wearing this earlier today. And this is just another protection barrier we have to cover our face, cover our head. And then here's our helmet. It's just like, think of it like a big football helmet kind of with a shield. We all have our names and our numbers on here. Right here's our mask. And you guys saw that we have these SCBAs. We have oxygen in here and this is how we get the oxygen into our face. We put this on our head and it makes us look like Darth Vader. And this helps us so if we go to like a place with smoke and fire, we don't want to breathe all that into our lungs. That's real nasty, dirty, yucky stuff. So this oxygen in here keeps it clean for us. So I wear gloves too, and these are big. These are almost like gloves that you'd use to pull stuff out of, out of an oven. Like you can use these as oven mitts. When we put this coat on, this is our jacket, this is actually the barrier to keep us shielded from all the heat, so we're actually able to go in and put the fire out. We can experience temperatures from anywhere from maybe 200 degrees, maybe all the way up to over 1,000. These are rated for right around there, but even at, even at a certain point, these will even melt. All that stuff right there is called personal protective equipment, and that's what keeps us safe from any time we go on a call that involves potentially life-threatening hazards or conditions that we may experience. So that's why we put them on every time we think that's gonna happen. things about this career is that you, you try to work with, you work with your friends. Everybody gets along here, everybody's family oriented. You help other people and when they call you. So yeah. that's the ultimate goal and I think we've accomplished that here at Engine 9 and Station 9.